Ah, uh, yes. Good luck to you, sir. I do hope you have a good game. Uh, gentlemen, suck my Bar episode 17, where my goal is to share cocktails, content, and happiness. This cocktail is made with cucumber infused vodka, blanc vermouth, unfiltered nigori sake, and we pair all that with more cucumber, mint, toasted sesame seeds, lime juice, and creme fraiche. And for the mocktail, we'll also be using the cucumber, the mint, the sesame, and the creme fraiche for a really bright and vibrant mocktail. So here's the build for both of our drinks. Charlie McDennis has one and a half ounces of house-infused cucumber vodka, three quarters of an ounce lime juice, a quarter ounce cucumber mint syrup, a quarter ounce toasted sesame syrup, a bar spoon of our creme fraiche, a half ounce of unfiltered nigori sake, a half ounce of Lillet Blanc Vermouth, two dashes of celery bitters, three drops of saline solution. We shake, we double strain, we serve it up, and we garnish it with some mint and three drops of toasted sesame oil. And for the Charlie McDennis 2 Electric Boogaloo, we're doing a half ounce of that cucumber mint syrup, a half ounce of that toasted sesame syrup, one whole ounce of lime juice, a bar spoon of our creme fraiche, three drops of saline solution, shaken, serving over ice, and topped with a little bit of soda water. So let's jump right into the prep for these drinks because there's a good bit of it. All right guys, so our tools for our prep today. You need a cutting board, you need a knife, you need a kitchen scale, you need some sealable containers, preferably glass, but core containers also work. You need a measuring cup, you need a mesh basket strainer, you need a juicer, or a blender. You need a pot. You need a citrus juicer. You need a bar spoon or something you can stir with. You also need a mortar and pestle, spice grinder, or food processor. Now to start with our prep today, we're going to infuse our vodka with cucumber. For my mocktail people, you can feel free to skip ahead to the cucumber mint syrup. But for my cocktail people, let's get started because this infusion takes 24 hours. Now you may remember this infusion process from our Dentist is a Bastard episode. We're gonna do the same exact thing, just using a different fruit. So, for our ingredients for our cucumber vodka, we're gonna need 750 milliliters of vodka and 625 grams of cucumber sliced thin. Now keep in mind, this recipe will yield enough to make about 16 Charlie McDennis cocktails. So adjust accordingly. All right, let's grab our cutting board, let's grab our knife, we're gonna grab a couple cucumbers, we're gonna need our container to infuse in, and we're gonna need our kitchen scale. So make sure your cucumbers are washed really good, and we're just gonna start by slicing our cucumbers very thin. We want really thin slices because we want the most amount of surface contact between the vodka and the cucumber. So we're just going to slice them up real thin, as thin as we can. Alright, I'm going to place my container on the scale. I'm going to zero out my scale and weigh out my first cucumber to see where I'm at. Remember, for every 750 milliliters of vodka, we are looking for 625 grams of cucumber. Okay, slice up our second cucumber. Right, we got our cucumbers weighed out. Let's grab our measuring cup, grab our vodka, and we need 750 milliliters. We're gonna fill up our container. Right, we wanna seal it up. You wanna give it a good shake. Now you're gonna place that in a cool, dry place somewhere on your kitchen counter. Allow that to infuse for 24 hours. And whenever you walk by it, go ahead and just give it a good shake. So we got ours going now. I went ahead and made a batch yesterday so I can keep going with this episode. It's been 24 hours. So I'm gonna open this up. It smells great. I'm gonna grab a container. I'm gonna grab a mesh strainer. I just wanna pour that vodka through the mesh strainer. Get all those cucumbers out of there. Give it a good shake to shake all that vodka off. And there it is, our cucumber infused vodka. See it picks up that nice light green color from the cucumber. Put it in my storage container. You could also put it back into the bottle if your bottle of vodka is empty for storage. Just make sure you label it and date it. And the shelf life on that is up to two months refrigerated. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do on our prep, guys, is make our cucumber mint syrup. And for that, we're gonna need 250 grams of cucumber juice, 250 grams of sugar, and we're gonna need 25 grams of mint leaves. So to start, let's grab our cutting board, let's grab our knife again, and for this, we're gonna to wanna to cut our cucumbers into chunks so we can juice them. Guys, remove your cutting board. Let's grab our juicer, get that set up. We're gonna get our juicer turned on. Start juicing our cucumbers. 
Remember, we're looking for 250 grams of cucumber juice. Now just a side note, if you don't have a juicer at home, you can use a blender. Put your cucumber chunks into the blender and just gradually turn it up to high and let that thing run it until it is completely smooth and in liquid form. And then you're gonna wanna pour it through a mesh sieve a couple times to really strain out all the pulp. But if you have a juicer, it is a lot easier of a process. All right, that was about two cucumbers that I juiced. I'm gonna grab my scale and just weigh that out to make sure I have enough. Grab a container, place it on the scale. Make sure you zero out your scale. Let's weigh out our cucumber juice. Oh yeah, right about perfect. So two cucumbers, but this recipe will work perfectly. So we're done juicing. Let's get rid of our juicer. Set our cucumber juice aside for now. Let's grab another container, place it on the scale, zero it out. Let's weigh out that 250 grams of sugar. Set that aside. Let's grab another storage container, zero out the scale, and let's weigh out our 25 grams of mint leaves. Let's go ahead and pick the leaves from the mint. You don't want these big stems in there. You want to try to get all leaves. Some stems are okay. Leave out the big ones. You want to make sure you save some extra mint. Set some aside for garnishing as well. All right, 25 grams. I'm gonna set these aside for my garnish. All right, so we got everything weighed out. Let's get our burner on here to a medium high heat. We're gonna add in our 250 grams of cucumber juice, our 250 grams of sugar, and our 25 grams of mint leaves. You're gonna grab your bar spoon. We wanna give it a good stir. Love making cucumber syrup. It's so vegetal, so bright, such a good smell coming off this pot. All right, so we wanna bring that up to a boil, allow all that sugar to dissolve and allow those mint leaves to steep. Once that happens, we'll go ahead and turn it off the heat and then allow it to cool. Now, while we're waiting on our cucumber mint syrup, I'm gonna go ahead and get our limes cut and juiced. So grab your cutting board, let's grab our knife, get all our limes laid out here. And I like to cut all my citrus at once and then juice it all at once. Just leads to a quicker process. All right, our limes are cut. Let's grab our citrus juicer. Let's grab a container to juice into. Place that lime right side up. You know the drill. Lines of juices, put our cutting board down. Next, we're gonna grab our basket strainer. Double strainer citrus as always. Two. Grab a lid, grab some blue tape, and let's label and date. All right, our lime juice is done. Our syrup's coming to a boil. All that sugar's dissolved. Let's go ahead and turn it off the heat. And we're just gonna let that cool, allow those mint leaves to steep until it's completely cooled, and then we'll go ahead and strain it. All right, our syrup is cool. Let's go ahead and grab a storage container. Grab another mesh sieve. Place it over your storage container. Grab your pot, pour that syrup through. Trying not to spill. Grab a lid, grab some blue tape, something you can label and date. And the shelf life on that is up to two weeks refrigerated. All right, next, we're gonna make that toasted sesame syrup. So we're gonna need 150 grams of toasted sesame seeds, 150 grams of sugar, and 250 grams of water. Now to start, let's grab our scale. Let's grab a container, place it on the scale, zero out your scale. And we're gonna weigh out 150 grams of sesame seeds. 150 grams of sesame seeds and shout out to Sprouts because it's the only place I've found you can go and buy sesame seeds in bulk for an actual reasonable price. So we got our sesame seeds. Go ahead and grab your food processor, your mortar and pestle, your spice grinder, whatever you have at home. Got it all set up. Pour your sesame seeds in, and we're just gonna get a coarse grind on them. We don't want them a powder by any means. Just ground up enough so they're not whole sesame seeds. More. All right, guys, that looks pretty good. Put that off there. What we wanna do is we wanna add these to our pot. All right, now before we get anything else weighed up and added into our pot for our sesame syrup, I wanna go ahead and toast these right in the pot. So we're gonna turn our burner on to a medium low heat, grab our bar spoon. We can just stir them around. Now what we're looking for here is you just wanna to start to smell the sesame seeds. You wanna be careful not to burn them. Once you start to get that little bit of nutty scent in the air, that's when you know they're done. All right, so while those are toasting up, let's go ahead and weigh out our sugar and our water. Make sure we keep a close eye on these not to burn. Let's grab our scale, grab a container, zero out that scale. We wanna weigh out 150 grams of sugar. 
We got our 150 grams. Give these another little stir. Let's go ahead and grab another container for our scale, zero it out. We wanna weigh out our 250 grams of water. Okay, let's place our water aside as well. Continue to give these a stir. Here I'm sizzling. Right, we're starting to get that nutty smell. Starting to see some of the sesame seeds brown. All right guys, I got these toasted just where I want them. I'm gonna go ahead and add my 150 grams of sugar to the pot and add my 250 grams of water. I'm gonna give that a good stir. I'm gonna bring that up to a medium heat. And what we're looking for is to get this here to a simmer. And we're gonna allow it to simmer for 40 minutes. Now while we're waiting on that to simmer for the next 40 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and get our creme fraiche mixture going. Basically what we're gonna do is make a one-to-one -one ratio by weight of creme fraiche and water. Now the reason I do that instead of putting creme fraiche directly into the cocktail, I found if I put the creme fraiche directly in, it gets a little chunky. Whereas if you dilute it with water, it gives you all that fattiness and that little bit of acidity from the creme fraiche and you keep a nice luxurious mouthfeel. All right, so I'm gonna grab a container, I'm gonna place it on the scale, I'm gonna zero out that scale, I'm gonna bar a spoon in the amount of creme fraiche I want. Right, so I got 21 grams of creme fraiche. Now I'm also gonna weigh out 21 grams of water. Equal parts. All right, we got our equal parts of water and creme fraiche. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stir that in to the water until it's completely smooth. Looking good. Throw a lid on that for now. now I'm gonna go ahead and label and date this. I would try to only make enough of the amount of cocktails you need the time in which you're making it to each their own. I'd say the shelf life on this is probably the same as the shelf life on your creme fraiche container. All right, let's check on our sesame syrup. Let's just give it a little stir. Just making sure it's staying at a light simmer for the next 40 minutes. Really want that sesame to infuse into the syrup. And so our sesame syrup is done. We're gonna go ahead and turn it off the heat and allow it to cool. All right, once cool, we're gonna grab another storage container, grab a mesh sieve, place it over that storage container. We wanna strain this syrup. Grab your spoon and twist that around a little bit. Give your sesame seeds a little press. Dump out the excess sesame seeds. Continue to pour. I made a small batch of the sesame syrup today because I know I'm only going to need it for this cocktail. So if you find yourself making a lot, you can always double this recipe, triple this recipe, quadruple this recipe, whatever you need. Store it into a more fitting container. Grab a lid, grab some tape to label and date. All right, so the last thing we gotta prep today, guys, for our delicious cocktail is our saline solution. And I'm not talking about the stuff you put in your dry ass contacts. We're gonna make a 15% by weight saline solution. And this is an awesome ingredient. A touch of salt in a cocktail can transform a drink tremendously. Let's grab our scale. We grab a container for that scale, turn our scale on, zero it out. And we're gonna weigh out 100 grams of water. Add that to our pot. Place another container on the scale. Make sure we zero out the scale again. We're gonna weigh out 15 grams of salt. Add our salt to the pot, turn our burner on to a medium high heat, grab our bar spoon, and give that a stir. We just wanna bring that water and salt to a boil enough to where all the salt completely dissolves. All right, that's coming up to a boil. Our salt is dissolved. Let's take that off the heat, and you wanna let that cool a little bit, put it into a storage container. Blue tape, label it, and date it. Got a lid, and that's it for our prep today, guys. Let's get shaking up some cocktails. All right, guys, we got everything prepped that we need. We got our cucumber vodka, our cucumber mint syrup, our toasted sesame syrup. We got our one-to-one -one ratio of creme fraiche and water, and we also got our 15% saline solution. Let's go ahead and grab our shakers, grab our glassware, gonna need our jigger, Move our glassware to the side. We always work cheapest ingredients to most expensive ingredients. Now, my right tin, your left side of the screen, I'm gonna be making the Charty McDennis cocktail. And in my left tin, your right side of the screen, I'm gonna be making the Charty McDennis 2 Electric Boogaloo mocktail. All right, so let's start with the three quarter ounce lime juice in our Charty McDennis cocktail and the one ounce of lime juice in our Charty McDennis 2 Electric Boogaloo mocktail. A quarter ounce of cucumber mint syrup in our cocktail, and a half ounce of cucumber mint syrup in our mocktail. And a quarter ounce of toasted sesame syrup in our cocktail, and a half ounce of toasted sesame syrup 
and our mocktail. And both drinks are gonna get a bar spoon of our creme fraiche one-to-one -one with water. Both are gonna get three drops of saline solution. If you don't have a dropper, a straw is a great way to do that. Two and three, two, three. Now for our cocktail, we're gonna need a half ounce of Le Blanc Vermouth. Shake up that Nagori Sake. And we're gonna need a half ounce of our unfiltered Nagori Sake into our cocktail. And we're gonna need one and a half ounces of our cucumber vodka going into my right hand, your left side of the screen, Shardy McDennis cocktail. And lastly, in our cocktail, we need two dashes of celery bitters. So let's grab our big sides of our shaker tins. Let's get them iced up. We fill both shakers all the way with ice. And we're also gonna ice the glass for our Charlie McDennis 2 Electric Boogaloo Mocktail. Seal up your shakers. Shake for 12 seconds as always. open our cocktail and our mocktail. Let's grab our Hawthorne strainer and our basket strainer. We're going to strain the mocktail first. Next I'm going to strain our cocktail. And for our mocktail, grab some seltzer water, some club soda. We're going to Top that bad boy off, give it a nice sparkle. Agitate the mocktail with a spoon to mix in those bubbles. And then for both, let's go ahead, grab your straw, grab your toasted sesame oil, and we're just gonna drop three little drops for garnish on the top of both. So you get a little bit of that extra sesame note on the nose. And lastly, let's grab our mint, give it a smack to unleash those oils. And let's garnish these cocktails. Some mint. And there it is. The Charty McDennis and the Charty McDennis 2 Electric Boogaloo. Let's taste. I'm gonna start with the cocktail here just for my frame of reference. It's great. You get the mint on the nose, the sesame oil. Oh, man, super bright. Nice level of acid. You also taste that toasted sesame oil as you slip, sip, as you sip slowly. Nice creaminess from the creme fraiche. Beautiful looking cocktail. And what a great way to finish the summer, man. This is a fucking fantastic cocktail. Let's try the mocktail, the Charlie McDennis 2 Electric Boogaloo. Still get the mint and that toasted sesame oil on the nose. And that's it, man. That's that's banging. Super crushable. Super refreshing. I love sparkling mocktails, man. They're so nice. Yeah, I love this cocktail, man. This recipe, the cucumber, the mint, the sesame, the nuttiness, it all comes together. There's so many nice layers. That little bit of salinity from the saline solution. Really can't ask for anything more in a cocktail like this. It, it really it really hits all the, all the marks. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you've enjoyed the recipes. Maybe you made them along with me. Maybe you're writing them down and saving them for a later date. Either way, let me know how you're liking these recipes. We're going into fall with a whole new menu coming out next week. Guys, become a regular somewhere. Become a regular at your local watering hole. It's the best way to support local business. And become a regular here at Happiness Bar by liking, commenting, subscribing, hitting that bell if you want notifications. We got cocktail videos coming out every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern to get you ready for the weekend. Stay happy, everyone. Half ounce of that tested sauce.